Hey everybody, how's it going today? It's me, Captain Energy. Today we're going to talk about recording audio in Reason. This was a request from one of my subscribers asking how to record audio in Reason. I'm just going to go straight to how to record audio in this video. Um, and I'm going to assume that you have a proper audio interface, a microphone, and all those things, because that's some of the stuff I was planning on going over. Um, but it just is too much for one video. So basically, uh, we're just going to talk about how to record audio. First, as you can see in a new project, there's no tracks or anything. In order to add a track to contain your audio, we need to add a track using either the add track. We can right click and go to create audio track. We can go up here to create and hit create audio track, or we can just hit control T to create an audio track. Control T is the shortcut. I'm going to hit that control T boom audio track. Now, as you can see, we now have an audio track in here. What we also or, or don't have is we have no audio coming into the track. I'm going to enable a microphone right here. So now, as you can see, as I speak, the microphone causes this meter to move. If you have movement on your track or on your meter, then you have audio going into the, that track. Okay. That's one thing. Anyway. All right. If this was a, uh, currently, as you can see, I'm working on a mono track because it's a voice, you know, typically mono voices recorded in mono, unless using effects on it, um, in the recording process. If I were to use this and I wanted to do uh, this as a stereo track, I could just click this in and it's right here. I can change from mono to stereo. And if I did that, instead of being input at one and two, they would be on the same input. I'll do it right now to show you. So stereo and now one and two are on the same channel. We have a left and a right. Now I'm going back to mono because we don't actually need that for this demo. This in also lets you select if you've got an audio card with more than one input, you can select the input that you're recording from. Typically you would record from input one off the get go, but you might be set up where you have, I have several inputs on this audio card that I'm using. You may have a band, you might be recording a choir and have six microphones placed throughout the entire, uh, the entire choir you know, center, left, right, hard left, right, above left and right, and one for a soloist. You could set that up so you could record each of those channels, depending on your input, and select those inputs for your tracks. So if I wanted to record channel two, I'd select channel two. So that'd be my microphone coming in on channel two. I could add another channel here, another uh, track, and that one could be channel one. But now, as you can see, the this little record button here changes to show me what track is being recorded when I go from track to track. If I wanted to record more than one track simultaneously, so I want to record the whole choir singing together, right? I want to be able to hit all those microphones. I don't want to just record just one, right? In order to do that, you would have to hit record and able on the tracks you want to record. So if I had 10 tracks I wanted to record to, I'd have to turn record and able on, on each of them to be sure that I was recording all the channels at once. When I hit record now down here, all those channels would be being recorded. As you can see, because I've got a microphone on this channel, stop that here. Uh, you can see that it's recording here and nothing's getting recorded here. There's no microphone plugged into channel two, which is what this one is actually hooked into. So that's the first thing. So now you know how to record to individual channels. Once you've got audio recorded, I'm actually going to bring in an external file for this because I don't feel like singing right now. I'm not really a singer and I, uh, I put together some audio for this already to uh, make this part a little easier. There it is. Yes. Let's bring that in here. All right. So now we've got a little bit of music that I actually sang for this. It's a song I wrote like 20 years ago. Um, and now if I want to map this music to uh, tempo. First of all, let's see how it sounds right now. It might be mapped already to the tempo correctly. Dance with me, I'll set you it's free definitely not. tonight. To get that to happen, what you want to do is turn off snap. A lot of times when you're bringing in audio from an external source, it may not be mapped up correct. You want to be sure the BPM is right um, also, but aside from that, 
Uh, I know that this, let's see, should be right about there. Dance with me, I'll set you free tonight. There we go. Now, all right, so now that it's in there, I'm going to re-snap this. Now that I have it in there, I can have it on snap. Now when I move it around, it's going to stay locked to the uh, to the grid. So that way when I go in here, if I go ahead and slice this, and I bring this over here, holding down the control key, I'm just dragging this. This will drop a duplicate. Okay. All right. So one. Dance with, dance with. See, it's it's mapped up, right? It's not quite what I want to hear, but you get the idea. There, everything's locked to the tempo. Um, and from this, you can actually do some pretty cool effects. I used to do a lot of stutter effects using this type of thing uh, before stutter effects were an actual effect in uh, my DAW. I used to have to edit this type of these would be edit stutters. All right, so here we go. We're we've got that figured out. We know how to record multiple channels. You know where things are. How to lock them to the tempo. Uh, if you wanted to record automation for this, okay, I'm just going to grab this and drag it up here, and that's fine. I'm going to mute this channel. I'm going to turn off record for this channel. I'll turn it off both, actually, but I'm going to leave this on right here, this red right here. Uh, this being red on that lane records automation to that channel. So now if I go over here and let me get the mixer open so we can see, and I hit... Get back to the beginning. Hit record. Set you free tonight. All right. So if I mess with the fader there, like I just did, you can see it recorded this, these uh, waves down here, and these will basically affect the um, the volume of my track. I'm moving this over to the left, so we have a little more. You can hear a little more of it. But if I go over here and now play the entire track, Dance with me, I'll set you free tonight. Yeah, and that works with panning or any other kind of effect as well. Um, I'm going to delete that. Again, that was just there for a sample. Now, uh, next thing you need to know, let me show you how to do this, is uh, if I click this audio track, you'll notice that this top menu changes right here. Okay, You have a few different options. From here, you can do some stuff right off the bat without even going into these edit modes. You can change the position of this piece of audio right here. You can change the length of it. You know, I can I can change the how long it is right here. So yeah, it brings the bar down basically. So I mean, you know, you can play with that if you want. I typically just do that from here, grab and stretch, but you can do it there if you'd like. Um, you can add fade ins, fade outs right here. So if you want to just have like a fade in for maybe you have a bit of audio you want to bring in, uh, just drop a little. A sample in and you want to add a little fade in a little fade out to to kill off a pop you can add that right here you can adjust the level of it so i can tell it uh let's take that up dance with me i'll set you free there you go i can transpose it tonight dance with me i'll set you free tonight Dance with me, I'll set you free tonight. You know, right here, you can do all that. Um, if you want to get into some real editing with this, or some more editing with this, I should say, you go into Slice Edit, and now this is going to show you hit markers. And what these hit markers indicate is where Reason thinks the sounds are, are hitting. So I can go over here and say, uh, say, for example, let's hear this and dance with me i'll set you so the me that, this right here is me okay if i wanted me to hit be quicker i could do this drag this back right dance with me i'll set you free tonight As you can see set you free is also being affected by it it's kind of a you know one of those things where when you do it you kind of got to know what you're uh changing if you want to, you can add can go right here, and I can add additional pointers to help me uh, minimize the changes on one part while getting the parts that I want to be changed, you know, to actually change. I can also slice out the parts. Like if I want to get rid of this, because say there's some kind of weird artifacting going on here now, I can go right here and just delete that piece. That way, I would get the dance with me. I'll say it. 
set you free tonight. You know, it definitely shows you what can be done. I am going to just bring this down again. Boom, there we go. Uh, you can go into, that's the slice edit mode. If you go in here and select your audio and hit pitch edit. Now when you go in here, what you'll see is that if you've used tools like um, Melodyne or whatever, any of those type of tools, this will look sort of familiar. What it's done is it has taken the notes of what I've sung. Dance with me. And there we go. Dance with me, I'll set you free tonight. And tried to map them out here. Now, this is, you can see where I'm a little off. I'm a little, you know, I'm, I'm right here. I guess I'm pretty, pretty right on with my G. My G is real, real strong. It looks like that's pretty good. Um, <laughs> uh, and, uh, but uh, my F looks pretty good too. It's not terrible. But, you know, right here, this G isn't as strong. I could take this and I could actually adjust it uh, manually if I want to. Turn on this fine right here. And I could actually drag it to where it should be if I want to. Or maybe uh, if I want to, I could even just grab everything and tell it to correct. And it would go, okay, well, I'm going to adjust you to the closest pitch that you should probably be aiming uh, you're probably aiming for boom i hit that Sorry, i gotta hit grab all first correct and you'll see it snaps the entire song to right on a pitch now dance with me i'll set you free tonight a lot less human but definitely the pitch is corrected you could also uh let's see here you know hit reset we'll take you back to the original uh, you can also adjust the amount of bend between notes so if I take this and turn that down free to it almost kind of flattens out the free when I say free free to can you hear that um, you can also take this and adjust and kind of increase the kind of bend from one note to another free set you free tonight um this will also help you out if you're trying to create harmonies uh using this uh same pitch edit if i take this we get out of here for a second and i'm just going to duplicate this whole uh track duplicate track and everything right there boom let's go in here we're going to pitch correct again i'm going to take all this and we're just going to move it up dance with me i'll set you free tonight do for for a ninth if you want three four dance with me i'll set you free tonight and this can be adjusted so that the uh the second track isn't as dominant dance with me i'll set you free tonight i can take it and i can also change the formant on it so this will increase the kind of pitch without changing the tune if that makes sense Dance with me, I'll set you free tonight. Pretty cool stuff, right? I mean, you could take that another, I could take that another level. I could go out here again, and uh, we could just take this whole thing, duplicate track and all that again. And now, instead of doing uh, going uh, up with it, we're going to go down. So I'll take all this, control all, and we're going to take the format, and we're going to bring it down. Dance with me, I'll set you free tonight. Kind of reminds you of uh, Monsters and uh, what's it called? I can't think of it. It's a Skrillex track anyway, something in Monsters. But now we go over here and I can take this whole thing and we'll transfer it down nine as well. Actually, we'll do just three because three would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Boom. Dance with me, I'll set you free tonight. Dance with me, I'll set you free tonight. We could throw some effects on this, and pretty soon we'd have something to pretty dance crazy. Dance with me, yeah. I'll set you free tonight. Maybe we pan one to the left, one to the right, and call it a day. I don't know. But you get the idea. Pitch correct. Boom. There you go. The other thing you can do with audio is comp recording and editing. Now, this is something that I've heard a couple people say that you were unable to do here in recent. I'm going to open a new project to do this because 
this is kind of uh, one of those things where I feel like I need some fresh tracks just to show you how this works. Let's drop a new track in here. I'm going to hit Control T or Command T, by the way, on the Mac. Command T to create a new track on the Mac. Okay, so here we go. Here's our track. Now we've got four bars. I'm going to knock this down to two bars. Okay, so we've got, and I'm going to hit record and leave this on loop. See how it's on loop right now? If I hit record, this is going to allow me to record while at the same time creating a new track every time it hits the end. It's not going to display all those tracks in the front. It's going to add them to the back. I'll show you what I mean by that. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to record the same thing over and over again. Are you ready? Here we go. I like reason. I like reason recorded a bunch of times, right? But where is it? It shows all I see is one thing here. Well, what happens is if I hit comp edit, you'll notice now we have all these like comp tracks here. Okay. Here's the last one we just recorded. There's one. Let's turn this one. Hold one on. Ready? I like reason. All right, so to split this, we get the razor blade right here. Click the razor blade. And now I go up to the top part here, and I hit snip wherever I want these to happen. Okay. So we've got a few little splits here. I like reason. One at each word. So we got I like reason, right? Now, if you double-click that, you'll notice that it goes down here. And now I can pick which piece... I want this to go to. So if I play it, I like reason. I can adjust these. I like reason. 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 See what I've got going on there? Now I've comped these tracks into one track up top here from the several bits that I recorded earlier. Okay. You can adjust the volume of these different parts right here. Right here. I like reason. And once we're all done with that, I can right click this whole thing and grab this whole thing. And I can just tell it I to like bounce reason. to a new track. Okay. I stop like from playing. Reason. It doesn't work when it's playing. You can't do that. It needs to be stopped. So I'll right click now. We bounce there. And now we'll have one piece right here. Or one, you know, pressed version with just those pieces that you selected. You can join these if I want to um, by right clicking and then just going join clips. Could have done that before, and it would have made it one piece. I forgot to do that. No big deal. I like reason. And now that's it. So you now we've comped it, like you know, some vocals. This is more useful when it's music and you're like doing it to a beat and you're kind of doing it kind of right, if you will. Like, like I'm just reason. trying to use it for spoken word at the moment. Um, I like reason. You can also use this as a punch in, punch out method. So if you're trying to get a guitar solo right or something, you can uh, punch in before the guitar solo starts a little bit, punch out a little bit after it ends, and then just literally play the rest of the song on the other tracks and have that one track you're recording on. Just record, 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 record till you get the perfect take or until uh, you get enough pieces to comp together <laughs> the solo you wanted to hear. Uh, some people might call it cheating. Other people might call it innovative. I don't know. You decide. But anyway, and that's pretty much it for today with the recording audio with Reason. If you have any questions about how this worked, uh, feel free to hit me up. I will be glad to answer more questions. Uh, I uh, just kind of tried to get through this as quick as possible to, to show you the basics of audio recording. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn the alerts on so you know when the next video drops. I look forward to hearing from all of you. Have an awesome day. See you next time. Bye.